What does it mean for you for the Imitation Game to be nominated in so many well-deserved categories this year? Oh, it's a tremendous honor, um, you know, especially as an American, to get to come here to London um, under such auspices. It's just, it's fantastic, and I couldn't be more proud of our film, and I'm so glad that it means that hopefully people will get to see it. I think Alan Turing was one of the great geniuses of the 20th century, and he was sort of written out of so many popular narratives of the Second World War and of computer science because he was a gay man. And so one of the things we wanted to do with this film was to put his life on screen, to show his whole life, um, uh, and give him the recognition that I think he was denied so much in his own life. Talking about um, Alan as a gay man, obviously the film kind of keeps that part of his life to a large extent kind of um, secret to the extent that we, we don't see him in those kind of intimate moments, those kind of relationships. Was that something that you considered and with a draft of the script that perhaps went further in that respect? No, you know, we'd never had a sex scene in any draft of the script. Um, I know there have been a couple of reports in the press that are incorrect. It's very strange. Um, uh, it had never... Um, you know, his homosexuality, I think, was so at the core of Alan's experience of the, wor of the world. And I think we wanted to show that. We wanted to show how the experience of being a closeted gay man in Britain in the 30s and 40s fundamentally um, inspired so much of his wonderful work. I think the whole concept of the imitation game um, was this idea that we are only what we can convince other people that we are. I think that is a concept um, that revolutionized philosophy and science, and it sort of only could have come from a gay man who was pretending to be something that he was not every single day of his life. I think there was this remarkable intertwining between Alan's personal life and his professional accomplishments, and that's one of the things that we were so excited about getting to bring to life on screen. Um, you know, I think that Benedict is is a, an unparalleled actor, and it's such a great joy as a writer to get to write for an actor like that. Um, he is he is endlessly inventive. He does a new thing every day. His the process of working with him was just a, a, a joy every day because you never knew what he was going to do. You never knew what was going to happen next. And I think he's always surprising as an actor. Whenever you think you have him pegged down, and whenever you think he's going to go right, he goes left. Whenever you think he's going to go left, he goes right. Um, and it's just an amazing thing to watch and to get to be a part of on set. What's made you most proud? What response to the film has, has given you the most personal pride? Oh, you know, um, uh, a month or two ago we had a screening for um, uh, a number of members of Alan Turing's family. Um, uh, I think the one of which, there was a woman, one of his nieces, who was 18 when he passed away. So she had some pretty good memories of him, and we had talked to her before production, to Benedict to talk to her and to sort of get some of her memories. Um, but after the screening, having members of, after that screening, having members of Turing's own family come up to all of us and tell us how proud they were of the film and how it made them feel like they were seeing him alive again on screen was just the greatest honor for us. I mean, there's no, that's, that's the most important audience for us.